is a three-way match scheduled for one fall. And it is for the Irish Junior Heavyweight Championship. What? 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fight Factory Pro Wrestling, House of the Wrestling. We have some card tonight. We have tag team titles on the line. We have Cash in Chaos. We have Anita Vaughn finally taking on Katie Harvey one on one. We have Cheeseburger. But first, we have the Irish Junior Heavyweight Championship on the line in triple threat action. And here is the champion, Fabio, the greatest Irish junior heavyweight champion of all time. That is not a self-proclaimed title. That is a title that he has earned from not just winning the championship, but defending it in countless different countries against countless different opponents. It is an endorsement given to him from LJ Cleary, who up to this point, you, you probably would have considered the, Irish, the greatest Irish junior heavyweight champion of all time in his own right. But the torch was passed. And now we have Fabio defending his belt tonight in triple threat action against two people who have never wrestled for the Irish Junior Heavyweight Championship before. And that is what makes him the greatest of all time when it comes to Irish Junior Heavyweight Champions. He is fearless when it comes to defending this title. And that's what Big Rab and Kuro are both going to have to be here tonight. They're going to have to be fearless. They're going to just have to throw caution to the wind and give it everything they have. I expect nothing less. Obviously, we're more than familiar with Big Rab, but we are not more than familiar with this man right here, coming to us from France and making his Fight Factory Pro Wrestling debut. This is unbreakable Kuro, and it's quite a debut. You know, we talk constantly about when fighters make their debut in Fight Factory Pro Wrestling, there's a huge amount of pressure on their shoulders because they're coming in, they're taking on the best, in a lot of cases, they have a reputation of their own. And they want to come in, they want to get the result that not just means a win on the night, but it also means future appearances, future opportunities. It's, it's a, a very high stakes affair to throw yourself into. And that's in a normal match. That's in a non-title match. That's just, you know, in a, in a regular fight. But this is no regular fight. This is a triple threat for the Irish Junior Heavyweight title. Introducing first, weighing in at 207 pounds, he is the two-headed cap, This is the opportunity of a lifetime for Big Rab. Up next, from Paris, France, he is one of the top five French wrestlers operating today. Could he be the first ever French Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion? We'll wait and see. Merci. And finally, he is the winning and defending and the greatest Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion of all time, the Pharaoh of French style. Will Fabio potentially end up regretting the decision that he made which led to this match? He turned around and he said if he wasn't given the opportunities he was given at such an early stage in his career, he would not be where he is today. So that's why he turned around and he said, I will defend this championship on this show against anyone as long as they've never competed for this belt before. 
And with that, you have to look at some of the wrestlers in Fight Factory that haven't competed for this title before. It's it, it's a lot of heavy competition, even with that uh, that condition. And it's let us it's let us here because in training, Fabio and Big Rab, uh, it, it was it was shown that obviously they were training together, and Big Rab said, "Oh, good, good Big Rab." It was a, it was a second or a Big Rab could have. Uh, Potentially got the win out of nowhere, but Big Rab turned around and he said, "Isn't it amazing you know, how far we've come?" And Fabio turned around and said, "Well, how far I've come? I mean, how far have you come, really? You know what I mean?" And that's that's the sort of thing that will get into the head of Big Rab. That's the sort of thing that he's going to need to be careful to control his emotions and make sure that that doesn't affect his game coming into this triple threat. And if you're if you're Kuro, I mean, this is a this is effectively a free hit. This is the ultimate opportunity. But you're coming in here. Uh, you know, despite being one of the top five wrestlers in France, he's relatively unknown to the Irish scene. And I don't I don't know how, how prepared Fabio is for Kuro. I don't know how prepared Big Rab is for this man as well. Right now, both of them are working together to to take Kuro out of the equation, but really this is every man for himself. Temporary alliances will be just that they will be temporary if there if there are any to begin with uh, when there's Irish junior heavyweight gold on the line you're always looking over your shoulder and temporary alliances just don't seem to last a big grab I mean again this is somebody who's slowly been climbing up the ranks of Fight Factor Pro Wrestling he's a really decent win-loss record of course former tag team wrestler in Fight Factory. That was initially how he made his name for himself uh, before the pandemic. He was part of the 03. He was a tag team man. But now as a singles wrestler, we're seeing a whole different side to Big Rab. A Big Rab that evolves from show to show to space and not, uh, showcasing not just strength, but, uh, but also a certain uh, quickness, a certain movement. Not just physically, but he, he's got really solid fight IQ that's constantly improving. But Fabio drags him out of the ring. Oh, and Fabio with some punches to the back of Big Rab. Big Rab with some strikes of his own. But they're both taking their eyes off Kuro, who comes through the middle rope. And doesn't manage to land with that dive. Of course, they call it high risk for a reason. But that's the thing about triple threat matches. You have to keep your eyes on all opponents at all times. Fabio, he's no stranger to that. I mean, this, this is the man who walked into grapple games as champion and walked out as champion. That was a five-way. So, Fabio has shown on previous shows that he can get it done when it counts, regardless of how many people are in the match, but it's still something to take into account. The nature of this match is gonna open up opportunities for Rab and Kuro, and he's gonna need to be careful as the champion to, to not allow, not just for himself to get caught, not just for himself to avoid getting pinned or submitted, but also for, for either of these men to pin or submit each other. If Big Rab, of course, pins Kuro or vice versa, the title changes hands. It, it's crazy to think that this is the opener of this show considering what's at stake but that just shows how stacked the show is here tonight we also have cash in chaos and Fabio right now he's going to be grateful that this match is taking place before a cash in chaos rather than after because otherwise uh, that's that's obviously another element to take into account going into this match and Fabio he's Really being put to the test here by uh, Big Rab. Rab very much holding his own. Very much looking comfortable, looking calm and collected. I did say at the start of this fight that mind games were, were going to be something that Big Rab may have to deal with in the sense of the trash talk that was taking place beforehand. But he's coping very well. He's staying calm. I think that is one of Big Rab's greatest assets as a fighter. He's, like, mentally as well as physically, he's quite strong. But Kuro coming in off the top. And this is what Kuro does best. A crossbody, sending both men into their respective corners. But it's the speed and the quickness of Kuro that's really something to watch out for. As he just flattens Fabio in the corner. And for Kuro, I mean, this is a chance to not just win gold, this isn't just a chance to make a name for himself, this is a chance to turn Fight Factory Pro Wrestling on its head. This is a man who, before today, most of the audience you know, didn't know who he was. And come the end of this fight, they're all going to know who he is, but will they know him as the Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion? That'd be a crazy story 
for Kuro, but this time his suicide dive works out. But Big Rab is finding himself alone in the ring, and I don't think he's gonna. And it looks like he's going for a dive of his own, and he does. He hits it over the top, and that is that is not what we're used to seeing from Big Rab. That's Big Rab. That's Big Rab just just doing what he needs to do to get the win here tonight. This is Big Rab uh, really digging deep and finding something different. And could this potentially be it? That's a lariat sending Fabio inside out. This could be it. And Fabio kicks out a two. It's very, very difficult to imagine Fabio being put away, especially this early on. But that's the sort of stuff that Big Rab needs to do more often. Take those risks. Throw caution to the wind. He did it per perfectly. One thing that Big Rab did very well there was capitalize. He capitalized very well on the opportunity he created for himself, and he was very quick. Uh, very quick to capitalize. He didn't. He didn't give Fabio a second. But as is the nature of triple threat action, in comes Kuro, and Big Rab tries to hit him with a larry, but he misses. And Kuro with all the momentum, but he takes his eyes off Fabio. No, he doesn't. You're an Aggie to Fabio, and could this be it for Kuro? Big Rab breaks up the count. And it's very interesting because, you know, this is a step up in competition for Big Rab. This this is, with respect to the, the likes of Reardon O'Connor, the likes of Jack Moody, and, and some of the talent that Big Rab has had to face to to get this far. Uh, you know, this is, this is the top of the tree. This is the top of the food chain here at Fight Factory. And... Uh, you know, you look at Big Rab, I'm very impressed with really how well he's holding his own as you see all three men exchanging chops. If you didn't know who was the champion and who were the contenders coming into this fight, you know, if you were a fan watching this for the first time, what would you think of Big Rab watching this? Because as he goes for a package pile driver, Fabio lands on his feet. I would think that you'd probably think Big Rab was somebody who's finding himself in title matches all the time as Fabio climbs up to the top turnbuckle and off the top Big Rab sent flying and that really has taken the wind out of Big Rab but Kuro he's on his feet and he hits a knee to the head of Fabio and Kuro he plants Big Rab in the middle of the ring but he takes his eyes off Fabio and Fabio with a cutter Managing to retain his title. And it's crazy that I'm saying this, but it almost feels like Fabio snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, which, despite the result, I think that says a lot about Big Rab and Kuro as well. To really force the, the greatest Irish junior heavyweight champion of all time to dig that deep. To, to pull off that result. Obviously Fabio proving why he's in the position that he's in. Because he's able to adapt so quickly to whatever his opponents throw at him. To whatever opponents he has to, he has to deal with. But on the flip side, you look at Big Rab and this has been... This has been a huge jump up for Big Rab, and, and you can see that mutual respect. I don't think this is the last we see of Big Rab in the Irish Junior Heavyweight title picture. Uh, you look at 2023, I think it could be a very, very big year for Rab, and, and credit as well to Kuro as well. He's, you know, this is someone who's come in a, as, a, as a complete unknown, and he may not have gotten the win here tonight, but you know when he leaves, the fans, they're going to remember who he is. And I doubt this will be the last we see of him either. I do notice that Fabio has got a microphone in his hand. Let's hear what the champion has to say. I've been declaring for a while now, 
That was the greatest Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion of all time. And I'm so happy that US fans have supported me along that journey. But I really feel like I've peaked as the greatest Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion of all time. And I think the only way to keep cementing my legacy to your people is by adding another piece of gold over my other shoulder. That's what I'm issuing the challenge right now for December 9th. Leighton Buzzard. Hey! I want the ICW World Heavyweight Championship. Oh! I wouldn't exactly call this man right here a team player, but he is incredibly talented. He has got all the potential in the world. So we're going to see how he fares in tag team action. And we're going to see how he fares in tag team action against the Bearded Beauties, which is a quite an intriguing one. I didn't really see this as, as a, a match I was going to see in any future shows, but Reardon and Jay Steins are going to be teaming against Butch and JDP. Let's see what they're capable of. You know, there's a lot of things I could say about Jay Steins right now, uh, and I'm going to say none of them because at the end of the day, he is a gangster. He's as hard as they get, you know, straight out of Compton. I have to, I, I, I can't, uh, I just don't want him to hear me and, and beat me up later, that's all. This is a team that they're fresh in off a loss uh, against the Saints of Destiny and it is the second time they've competed for the tag team titles and it's the second time they've lost. And I bring that up not as an insult and not uh, as necessarily a negative. Now it is a negative overall of course, you want to win these fights. But it's the fact that the Bearded Beauties are back here on the next show ready to fight again. They're not put off by the loss, they're not phased by the loss. Mentally, this is a very very strong team and it shows a lot of character to come out with a fight like that, again, second time for the gold, and to just keep going for it. And now they're going to be going for it against, uh, I suppose you could call it an odd couple tag team of Reardon O'Connor and, and Jay Steins. Uh, but that would, that would imply that an odd couple team is still a team. This is, I don't, I don't know, I mean, Jay Steins, the reason of course they're chanting that at Jay Steins is because at the end of the day, how, how can Reardon O'Connor even trust Jay Steins? Jay Steins is here after betraying, betraying, and I use that word with all, all the anger and energy you could possibly imagine behind it. Uh, he betrayed Dom Tuck, he betrayed Devin West, he betrayed the mid-card mafia. And, you know, this wasn't just a team, this isn't just, you know, a group. This was, this was friends, this was family, effectively. And now he's in another tag team match with Ridden O'Connor and this we're just supposed to believe that Jay Steins is gonna be a be a team player. That he's just gonna be a you know, someone who, who gets along with Ridden and does what he needs to do. 
Oh, I don't know about that, but Butch Armstrong anyway has the upper hand on Reardon. You know, I would say, not, not that I want to make predictions, but if the Bearded Beauties can approach this match with the same sort of strategy and the same game plan that they've done in previous matches, even even though their last match was a loss to the Saviors, you have to imagine that they'd, they'd be the favourites here to get the job done. Riven O'Connor, he may come across as somebody who has an incredibly low pain threshold, somebody who doesn't have the, the greatest tolerance for that sort of thing, doesn't like getting hit, but he is actually, he is a warrior. You know, we've, we've seen him take you know, all, all sorts of punishment in previous matches this year. This has been a breakout year of sorts for Reardon O'Connor as well. Uh, certainly here in Fight Factory. Although, I suppose you could say that about all four men in this match. As Butch Armstrong spins Reardon O'Connor around. And I'll let the noise of Reardon O'Connor's body hitting the canvas speak for itself. And Reardon tags in Jay. No, no shortage of confidence from Jay, but I, I don't think Jay realizes who's been tagged in behind him. He feels the beard. He knows what's he knows what's up. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to think on his feet here. Jay Steins, you know, interesting move to start talking to JDP when he's. Obviously got the size advantage, the strength advantage. He's the strongest wrestler in Fight Factory full stop. So I don't know. I, I just think Jay, perhaps a bit naively, went into that exchange. I don't think he thought at all. And Butch, pointing the fingers of Jay Steins. And now JDP with some chops. I mean, if you're the mid-card mafia and you want revenge on Jay Steins, I mean, this is as good as any revenge as you're going to get. JDP, although he is getting rocked at the minute. Jay Steins, well, this is what I was going to talk about. Jay Steins, if he wants to take on JDP, he's going to need to have, you know, a strategy, a game plan that's not just, that's not this, basically, because uh, that's not going to work. And what I was going to say was, you know, JDP in the ring with Jay Steins, that, that's all, all the revenge you need if you're the mid-card mafia. But Reardon O'Connor off the top, and he gets caught by JDP. And oh, just a, not even launching, just dropping the full weight of Ridden O'Connor onto Jay. And as I was saying earlier, the Bearded Beauties, uh, you kind of expect them to be the favourites on paper. And as it stands right now, they are very much firmly in control of this match. Butch Armstrong off the top. This could be it. And it's not. Jay Steins kicks out a two. This is the king of foreign objects. I don't know, I don't know if Butch can use this without getting disqualified, but he he may try it. No! Referee's discretion. Foxy hasn't called for the belt, so we're just gonna well we're just gonna run with it. Butch <laughs> Foxy's not looking. Butch Butch attacks Foxy and Oh that's disgraceful, Jay. That is disgraceful. You can't be attacking an official like that. That's... Yeah, yeah, no, this, no this, this could be... Oh, Butch rolls him up! And Jay Steins kicks out a two. You know, I will say, as, as much as I want to rip into Jay Steins for what he did for the mid -card Mafia, I will also say, I don't remember the last time we've seen Jay Steins in, in, in a... Oh! Ridden O'Connor wrenching... Butch back by the neck using his towel and now Jay Steins with the German dropping Butch Armstrong on the back of his neck and Butch kicks out at two. But I was gonna say, I can't remember the last time we've seen Jay Steins showcased like this as a single star. And all right, it, it's not gone a hundred percent the plan, but he is holding his own for the most part. He hasn't been put away. And and himself and Reardon do seem to be gelling a little bit personality-wise. 
I, I think it could be argued that Reardon and, and Jay Stein certainly do have their similarities. It's not impossible that they might gel together as a team, but I don't know. It's still, it still hurts to see Jay Stein's here, I'm not going to lie. Butch Armstrong fighting back with some strikes to the midsection of Reardon. Oh, and Reardon, that's very smart. Reardon basically infuriating JDP, getting Foxy's back turned, and now just taunting JDP even further so Jay Steins can use himself as a weapon against Butch Armstrong. Reardon has Butch right where he wants him. Now, if you're Reardon O'Connor and you're Jay Steins, you are doing everything in your power to stop Butch. From, from getting his bearings and tagging in JDP because that could spell disaster for both of these men. Oh, Raiden O'Connor getting the tell. But this is what I was saying, Jay Steins, he's not a team player. That's what we've just learned. And Butch, off the top, sending both men into each other. And now he tags in JDP. And I don't want to give anyone the commentator's curse, but this looks like it could be it for Reardon. Could be it for Silky Smooth, and it could be it for Jay Steins. JDP just cleaning house. Oh! Well, that's interesting. That's a miscommunication. Something we don't typically see from the Bearded Beauties. They're usually very well organized. That's something the Bearded Beauties have. Really, above most teams is, is their organization and their structure. And well, Ridden and Jay didn't seem to be able to take advantage. And oh! JDP going into. Unfamiliar territory off the middle rope and a double shoulder tackle sends both men flying across the ring and now Butch getting tagged in. What's he signaling for here? JDP Irish ripping Butch into Reardon and Reardon sent into JDP and Butch Armstrong's calling for Foxy to make the count. It's not enough, Raiden O'Connor, notoriously difficult to put away. Butch Armstrong has Raiden O'Connor up where Raiden doesn't want to be, but Raiden's back on his feet. And a super kick to JDP. Butch tries to run in, he gets tripped up. Oh, and Jay Steins from the outside. Manages to get his own strike in the cold breaker from Reardon and Jay Steins. This is a team that's working really well together. Oh, I thought that was it. I genuinely, I thought that was it. I thought Reardon O'Connor and Jay Steins managed to get a massive win in their first match together as a team. But it wasn't to be. The fans, of course. Willing on the Beard of Beauty, there's nothing new there. One of the most popular tag teams in Fight Factory. Reardon hitting the code breaker on his own partner and JDP catches a super kick. And it is not looking good for Silky Smooth. Bush comes in, JDP comes in. And that may be all she wrote. And it is the Bearded Beauties again. Showing great mentality to bounce back after a loss straight away, wasting no time getting back to winning ways. And if you're if you're a tag team and you want to be the champions, that's what you need to do.
I was saying nothing because I just wanted you to hear the booze. Well, tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. And Nita Vaughn gets her chance at the Queen of Irish Wrestling. Tonight, Anita Vaughn takes on Katie Harvey. We get to hear from Anita Vaughn. No need for this. There's just no need. Colin, please, please take the mic back. Colin, please. Okay. Harvey, of course, returning back to the ring earlier this year. And in that match, well, what the fans are chanting for, that's what happened when these two last shared a ring in a competitive match. Katie Harvey knocked Anita Vaughn out. It is as simple as that. And since then, Anita Vaughn has been obsessed. Anita Vaughn has won the Katie Harvey in singles competition. She has won the Katie Harvey one on one. Well, the fans aren't a big fan of the lanyard, but. Harvey stomping on the lanyard and in case Anita Vaughn wasn't infuriated enough as it was Anita Vaughn now has to deal she, she starts the match off angry and that's never really a good thing because with anger and obsession comes motivation and that's the that's the positive side of things that's what you know, people usually associate with an angry opponent but it also comes a sloppiness and a lack of focus you need to be able to separate your emotions from the task at hand and that is something Anita Vaughn I feel struggles with and she struggles with it perhaps due to a lack of experience uh, among everything else this has been a breakout year 
for any Yvonne. I know I say that about a lot of wrestlers, uh, especially here in Fight Factory, where, where we've got a lot of uh, promising young wrestlers coming through. But Anita Vaughn really did have a breakout year alongside the Sabres of Destiny. But there's, there's a lot to be said for an experience advantage, especially when it comes to the big fights, especially when it comes to needing to stay calm, needing to stay focused. These are things that Katie Harvey does really, really well. And that could be the difference maker Anita Vaughn, it, it appears that uh, she's having issues with her elbow. I don't know if that's necessarily the smartest thing to point out, unless you're playing possum, which she uh, appears to be. So that's good for Anita Vaughn. As a head kick flattens Katie. One thing that's definitely not going to help Anita Vaughn is the fans getting into her head. You'll see a lot of you'll see a lot of wrestlers that you know don't have time for the fans. A lot of wrestlers the fans don't appreciate or like for whatever reason. Sometimes wrestlers like that. It, it takes the pressure off. It means they're only in it for themselves. They're not trying to you know make the night of hundreds of people who are in attendance watching them or, or you know they're not taking them on the journey with them. Whatever. But then there's other wrestlers who really crack under that sort of pressure. They, they allow the fans to get into their heads. Uh, and JB is an example that springs to mind immediately. But another example is, uh, I think, Anita Vaughn. I think it's, it's perhaps one of her weaknesses. So, you know, you see her there talking to the fans. And, you know, th this is time. I mean, she doesn't have the time to showboat and, and you know, float around the ring and, and talk to the fans. She needs to focus on Katie Harvey. This is... You know, somebody who's won gold in, in multiple different countries. Somebody who, even right now, uh, is wrestling not just in Ireland, but all around Europe. And it's someone you, you really need to take seriously. If you're, if you're spending your time talking to the fans and worrying about the fans, and it, it's, it's just not going to be your night. And Katie Harvey off the middle, off the middle rope and across body. Vaughn immediately back up and fires back with a spin and back of her own. Hey, okay, Harvey does look to be in a lot of pain. You can kind of see it on her face. Again, well, there is the experience advantage mentally, physically, especially when you've been through, you know, some of the some of the worst injuries wrestling can throw at you. Physically, that is going to wear you down fight after fight. This is also the first time these two have ever fought in singles competition. But again, you see the Avon distractions. You know, talk about our lanyard. Forget the lanyard. Get another one. Make another one. This is this is more important. You know, we saw how obsessed Anita Vaughn was with Katie Harvey after the last fight. If she loses this one, mentally that could break her full stop. That that could be that could be it for Anita Vaughn in, in Fight Factory at least. Katie Harvey. Katie Harvey now firing back. Ducks under Anita Vaughn's kick. Anita Vaughn. Oh! Precision. The precision on that kick from Katie Harvey. An exploder suplex. Sends Anita Vaughn out into the corner. Anita Vaughn kicks out with two. Another very interesting aspect of this fight is the stipulation that Colum announced at the start of this uh, of this match that the Sabres of Destiny are banned from ringside. They can't get involved. You know, you have to wonder how long was Anita Vaughn aware of that? And if she, if she wasn't aware of it, how does that impact her strategy? You know, the Sabres, both Owen and Andy and Anita Vaughn, typically will help each other out in each other's matches. And it could be a game changer. We've seen it before when the Sabres defended against LJ and Fabio. And, you know, in, in, in reverse, I think Anita Vaughn, if she doesn't get that help and she doesn't get that interference, if it was part of her plan, that could be huge for, uh, for Katie Harvey and her chances at least. Uh, 
you also have to take into account is Katie Harvey. Looks like she could be going for a gory bomb. And Anita Vaughn gets out of it. And Anita Vaughn makes you wonder what has she learned from the previous encounter with Katie Harvey here in Five Factory. What has she learned from uh, from the loss? You know, you typically learn more from your loss than you do your victories. And that's the answer. That knocked her out cold. I'll, I'll say it now, that was a shock. That was a shock. I, uh, from, from where I'm standing, it didn't look like Katie Harvey was out, but of course, she was. She was out cold. And that's because there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of venom behind that strike from Anita Vaughn, as well as you know just the regular power that Anita Vaughn uh, already possesses. But Anita Vaughn got that done on her own. And Nita Vaughn got that done without any interference, without any cheating, without any shortcuts. Fans won't be delighted to see Martin Stairs walk out of that curtain. And to be honest, neither will Martin Stairs. I mean, he's not going to be happy to come out here number one because really what you want uh, is, is number five. You want to come out here with that advantage. You want to come out here fresh with all the other wrestlers that have been beaten down. But it could also be argued that when you come in at number one, you know, you, you've got 20 minutes to get your pins and submissions in. Uh, and you perhaps, you, perhaps you won't get that opportunity later on. It's it's kind of hard to predict. You never obviously had one of these before, so this match is gonna be a mess, and I mean that in a great way. What a singles match we have to start with. LJ Cleary versus Martin Steers. You know, there was a time when LJ Cleary was a lot like Martin Steers. Episode one, I remember going into the Big Sean for the first time, seeing Fight Factory for the first time, and LJ Cleary was in the main event for uh, for the Irish Junior Heavyweight Championship. And you know, he was young, he knew what he was capable of. He still is young, by the way, but he was even younger back then. He knew what he was capable of at the time. And the people did, the fans did, and it, it lit this fire under him, it lit this, gave him this hunger to go on and achieve everything that he's achieved up to this point. And I, I say that because you look at Martin Steers and there's almost some parallels there. There's almost uh, quite a few similarities between LJ and Martin Steers. Okay, that's the 20 minutes. Oh god! Oh god! He can't. We, we're trying. We're trying to get the clock going. LJ needs those two seconds. <laughs> Right, it's funny, we have a clock, a 20 minute clock. And I can tell you this now, this will be the fastest 20 minutes of your life. This is, I mean, five minutes of LJ Cleary versus Martin Sears, that alone is gonna fly in. And we've got some serious wildcards here. We've got Justin Daniels, who we saw in action in the main event of our last show. We've got CBL, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to CBL, we'll talk about him when he comes out. And AJ Scraggs, you know, that's a wild card, but again, this is a five-way, and this is an opportunity for, for all five of these men to win something that is, I would argue, as good as a championship. Because if you know how to use that briefcase and you know how to cash in and you strategize, that briefcase 
that briefcase is almost a guaranteed title victory. And I, I say that with no disrespect to Fabio. But it's very, very difficult to defend yourself if, if you're just out of, say, a 30-minute war. And, and in comes a fresh LJ Cleary or Martin Steers with a briefcase. That's the end of your title run and that's the start of a new one. So, you know, and, and you know Martin Steers especially is somebody who... He's shown how ruthless he is. He's shown how rich he is. He would cash in on a wounded animal. One thing twice about it. He's not in here for the honour or the morals. He is here for wrestling. And that is it. Martin Steers. Martin Steers being gotten to by a fan there. LJ Cleary. You know, it's, well, what well, I like about LJ Cleary, and you see this a lot in his fights, he does, he's, the pressure never really gets to him. I mean, this, this is, if it wasn't for the fact that we have uh, a tag team title match later on tonight, that's going to be our main event. This would probably be our main event. This is the main event. Uh, this is the main event and the other show. Um, but, so it feels like a main event. And the thing about LJ Cleary that strikes me is the fact that he does not feel main event pressure. I mean, for him, you know, this is somebody who, who needs this? This is a route back to the top for LJ Cleary. We've seen him, uh, you know, he failed to qualify for Grapple Games. He lost his championship opportunity uh, against Fabio. You know, he, he, this is someone who's, we know how good LJ is and we know all about his ability and what he's capable of, but this is an LJ Cleary who desperately needs to find a way back to the top uh, of the Fight Factory food chain. And this is it. You win this, you've got your briefcase and that is it, you are sorted. So for LJ Cleary, this should be a high-pressure affair, but it never feels like a high-pressure affair when LJ Cleary's involved because of just how calm he is. Look how loose he is, his movements. And, you know, you, you take that move there, for example. That looked like Martin Steers uh, had him in a double-leg Boston Crab. Look, Martin Steers is done with the advantage, but LJ Cleary with the, the strength in his legs to just throw Martin Steers uh, off him and... and now it could be a, a double leg Boston double leg Boston crab for uh, LJ, but obviously Martin Steers gets out of the ring and drags LJ by the hair. That could sometimes be used as a weapon. Martin Steers off the top, and LJ Cleary catching him. Uh, we're, no, we we don't have. Well, I don't want to speak too soon, but we we don't have any pins or submissions in the first four minutes thus far. I don't expect to see any until we have a, at least a couple more participants in this match. I can only assume, I mean, I, I don't know what the story is if zero pinfalls or submissions take place uh, in the 20 minutes. I can only assume we either go into extra time, go into sudden death, uh, or maybe there'll be a rematch scheduled down the line. Nobody gets the briefcase, but either way, that's not something LJ is thinking of. That's not something Steers is thinking of. They're thinking they're getting the pin, they're getting the submission, it's only a matter of time. But whoever comes in next has the advantage because now LJ and Steers, they've been going at, a, at each other for five minutes. They've exerted all that energy. And don't get me wrong, you know, if there was anybody who could, you know, be sort of the Iron Man or, or to, to have to, you know, wrestle and fight straight for 15 minutes, or for 20 minutes, excuse me, uh, it would be Steers or LJ Cleary. They have they have an excellent gas tank. They have an ex uh, excellent energy. Um, they, they're not typically wrestlers who tire out, uh, at least not early on. Ten, five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Who's it gonna be? AJ Scraggs. You can almost see a look. You can almost see a look of confusion on the face of Martin Steers. That's what I noticed when I, when I looked at him uh, during AJ's entrance. And this, this is interesting, right? You look at AJ Scraggs, uh, you know, and you look at his body language in contrast to, oh, LJ Cleary! Couldn't quite see from this angle if that was three. Well, that was three. LJ Cleary, as it stands, will be walking out here. He'll be walking out here with the briefcase. AJ Scribes, but what I was gonna say is, uh, and it, 
you know, Adrian Suarez came in here and his body language is completely different to that of LJ and Steers. There is, I, I don't want to say panic. I don't want to be disrespectful. And it, but but it, it was almost panic. You know, he came in, fired up, ready to go. He wanted to, to make quick work of LJ and Steers. But you know, when you're a young wrestler and you're in that position, it's, you know, still one of your first couple of matches on these shows. The heart is racing, the blood is pumping. You're sweating, you're you're nervous. And and with nerves comes panic. And AJ Scraggs panicked and allowed LJ Cleary to get the pin. And I thought we were gonna get another pin there for a sec. But Steers is doing the smart thing. He's getting AJ Scraggs to work alongside him. Uh, you know that's not a, a permanent alliance. There never is a permanent alliance in these multi-man fights. They are temporary alliances, but if you're Martin Sears, not only is it a smart thing to do, but if you're AJ Scraggs, you're going to have to keep an eye over your shoulder. You know what I mean? Steers has the experience advantage over AJ Scraggs. And you, you know Steers is planning for when that clock hits one minute. And we're looking at the seconds counting down. And him and AJ Scraggs have been working together up to this point. You know Steers is thinking, you know, when can I take advantage of this fella? You know what I mean? AJ Scraggs, you know, when you're a young wrestler in his position, you're more than happy to work as part of a team with someone like Martin Steers. You know, it, it builds the confidence. Uh, and it, it, logically, it can be very effective, but, you know, just, just mentally as well. Just, you know, it, AJ Scraggs, I will say he does belong in this match. He is a wild card. He's just in here out of next gen, which is crazy to think how much he's achieved in such a short time. He does belong here, but mentally, does he believe that he belongs here? That is the question, because... You know, it's, it's quite a lot to take on in such a short space of time. But working alongside Steers and oh, Martin Steers, he's not waiting any longer. Martin Steers going for that pin, he doesn't get it. And that was a that was a miscalculation on the part of Steers, I would argue. I understood why he went for it, but you know, AJ Scraggs needs to he needs to make a decision now. Is he gonna go back to teaming with Steers or is he gonna? Yeah, it looks like, he looks like he's, he's going to trust Steers for the time being. And LJ Cleary not having any time for it. Oh, all three men are down. This would be ideal if somebody was coming out right now. But there is still 90 seconds left to go. So, really, it's whoever gets to their feet first has the advantage. But LJ Cleary, if, if, you know, if, you're, if you're LJ, you want that to be you. Because right now, he's at a, a disadvantage. He's at the numbers disadvantage. Um... And when dealing with somebody as, as hungry and as promising as AJ Scraggs and as talented as Martin Steers and they're working together and they're beating you up two on one there's very little you can do even with the talent that uh, that LJ Cleary possesses oh, I've got the chops speak for themselves the noise speaks for themselves LJ Cleary gets cut off by the two men. And LJ Cleary lands on his feet. Well, he attempted to land on his feet. It didn't quite work out. But he still... Still has both Steers and AJ Scraggs. And he turns it into a double neck breaker. Excellent work from LJ Cleary. Really not put off. By the fact that he's in, you know, a temporary handicap match. Who's this one gonna be? CBL. CBL with a missile drop kick off the top. And there's a man wasting no time. The question coming into this fight. The question about CBL. Can he get serious? A question that was asked of him. In the match. Against LJ Cleary at our last show. Can he get serious? Can he get the job done when he needs to? And he was answering that question immediately. CBL. The freshest of the four men. And you can... 
If you just tuned in now and you missed what's going on, you would know that CBL is a pressure of four men. And he's putting that farmer's strength to good use. AJ Scraggs, Martin Steers, both on his shoulders. CBL's gonna be careful, he gets it. I was gonna say he was gonna wanna be careful, he needed to release that. Otherwise, you know, he would've been squashed under the weight of two men, but impressive, very impressive shot from CBL. LJ Clear from behind though. LJ Cleary going for a double leg boss crab. I don't know if that's the wisest idea. If I'm LJ Cleary, I'm looking at CBL, I'm thinking there's a potential ally to combat the numbers disadvantage, but LJ's not thinking along those lines. LJ's thinking everyone here is an enemy. No point in any alliances. And LJ Cleary going for the cover here. CBL counters it. CBL! CBL! Is the current... He is the current owner of the briefcase. And I'm not even going to use the word number one contender because, you know, you again, it's any time you want. That briefcase is any time you want. You There may be number one contenders that come and go in the meantime. You can take your time. You can be patient with it. You have an injury. You can, you can, you know, you can give that a bit of time. You, 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 can, you can use it straight away. You can use it immediately and call out Fabio if you wish. But that's, that's why the briefcase is so valuable. That's why it's so important. Um... And CBL currently will be walking away with that briefcase. I mean, you know, you have to feel for CBL right now. He'll be looking at that clock. He'll see seven and thirty, and he will want that. He will, he will hope that seven turns into a one. He'll hope that three turns into a zero. He wants this clock. He wants this match over. But unfortunately for CBL, still a long way to go. We still don't have Justin Daniels. That is the last contestant in this match. And what an opportunity that's going to be for Justin, but still two minutes to go before he makes his... Oh! AJ Scraggs floored with that chop. You don't, you don't typically see that with a chop where somebody gets floored. But it hurts so much that AJ Scraggs was just... The legs were taken out from underneath him. And that is... I mean, LJ Cleary's chops are incredibly underrated. Puts a lot of strength behind him. That can really wear out an opponent over time. AJ Scraggs. Has CBL in one corner. Steers. Has LJ Cleary in the other corner. Oh, and on the back of CBL's neck. AJ Scraggs. And Steers and Scraggs again. That alliance. Uh, AJ Scraggs. You could probably put it down to perhaps inexperience. Um, perhaps potentially a lack of confidence. But he's, he's sticking with that team with Steers. And again, Martin Steers rolls him up. AJ Scraggs takes out a two, but AJ Scraggs, it's almost like, oh, I don't know if that's wise by stairs now, I mean, you've, you've got an ally in this match that keeps coming back and keeps allowing you to team, I don't know if he'll keep up with that team after getting slapped in the face, but, CBL lifts up LJ Cleary, and CBL with the running sent on, and Steers, to be hit with the same thing but he lands on his feet from behind and all oh, rock cbl with that kick and off the middle rope the springboard stunner oh but aj scraggs pulls stairs off and that is why you need to be careful with temporary alliances and oh steers on the counter with another one of aj scraggs but aj scraggs takes the legs out from underneath martin stairs and a knee oh this is, it's very hard to keep up, it's very fast paced as we finish up the countdown for the final contestant. The Killmonger. And I don't know how religious Justin Daniels is, but if I was in his shoes, I'd be thanking God that I got this spot. With five minutes to go, Justin Daniels is the freshest man in the match. He's not going to be fresh for too long if he keeps headbutting everyone, but this is a man who, again, has great mentality. You know, he came up short in the main event. Oh, but LJ Cleary! LJ Cleary gets the pin! And I was going to say... 
Well, I was going to say, Justin Daniels has great mentality to, to be coming straight in after the last show where he went through a war with Fabio and came out on the losing end. And there we go. And that's another example of, of the strong mentality. The strong mentality that Justin Daniels has. Uh, I was going to say, you know, coming straight into this fight straight after a loss for the world title. But, but also, you know, to, to come into this fight as the freshest man with five minutes to go, still get pinned, and then turn that around immediately. But Sibiella rolls up Justin Daniels. Justin Daniels kicks out a two. Oh, and Justin Daniels, the noise of that headbutt. CBL taking it out with a clothesline, but I mean, you have to be careful with the headbutts. As effective as they are, you know, you use them too many times on too many people, you're gonna be hurting yourself, and CBL! CBL is the current owner of the briefcase, but Steers comes in. And AJ Scraggs is up as well. I was also going to say about Justin Daniels, is his leg 100% after the last show? You know, we've got three minutes to find out whether or not that's the case. And I go back to what I said, the quickest 20 minutes of your life. CBL doing very well to really uh, showcase his strength and his raw physical abilities. I mean, he's, we don't typically see him use his size to his advantage, but in this match, I'm starting to notice it more as he as he fends off the attacks from Martin Steers and he throws in AJ Scraggs. What 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 this man has is power, and it's power that we, we typically don't talk about when it comes to CBL. And Justin Daniels off the top rope. Well, I think that answers our question about his leg. And oh, CBL managing to catch him. CBL with two minutes to go. CBL looks like the favorite. CBL is the man in control. And walking away with the briefcase, with an Irish shooter heavyweight championship opportunity inside, it could be the man from County Longford. It could be CBL. It's a two-minute warning from a ring announcer. This is where you know any wrestlers that weren't looking at the clock, they hear that over the speakers, and it's it's a complete shift in your mindset, it's a complete shift in your game plan. What they need to be careful to do here is, is basically not panic. You know, it's difficult to have a game plan in a match like this. Again, we've never had one of these before. But, you know, don't deviate too far from the plan. Don't panic. Justin Daniels, AJ Scratch, and Sears are working together, but there is only just over a minute. So, I mean, this temporary alliance is gonna be short. And CBL launches Steers into Justin Daniels and AJ Scraggs and I can't get my eyes off the clock. 70 seconds, that is all we have left until CBL, as it stands, walks away with the briefcase. And it, no disrespect to CBL, but I don't think many people had it, would, would have predicted it beforehand. And that's, that's the beauty of this match, it really is the ultimate opportunity for anybody who gets a chance to participate in AJ Scraggs. AJ Scraggs? AJ Scraggs powerbombing Justin Daniels, who in turn suplexes CBL. But LJ Cleary is from behind. LJ Cleary with the roll up. But it isn't enough, and AJ Scraggs over clothesline is countered. The accuracy on those kicks. LJ Cleary could he be going for a double leg Boston Crab? If he is, he's, he's going to want to hurry. He's only got 20 seconds. Looks like a lion tamer, actually. If AJ Scraggs, LJ Cleary, but Martin Stairs from behind, Martin Stairs from behind, Martin Stairs gets it, and that's it, one second, it's over. Martin Stairs is walking away with the briefcase. And are we looking at our next Irish Junior Heavyweight Champion? As difficult as Fabio is to beat, a briefcase is anytime, anywhere. 
and you give somebody with the talent of Martin Steers a briefcase that's any time, anywhere, we've seen what he can do in this match alone. Beating LJ Cleary, AJ Scraggs, CBL and Justin Daniels. I mean, well, we're gonna hear from him now. Is he gonna, when's he gonna cash it in? seeing a brawl right now, the Bearded Beauties fresh off their victory with Ridden and Jenny Steins taken out, Steers, Justin Daniels and AJ Scraggs and I think I know what this means, I think I know what this means. <laughs> Red Beard Beauties, hey, perhaps. How about you and your two loser chums <laughs> against the Eric Red Bearded Beauties? Yes! The Eric Red Bearded Beauties! Butch JDP! Eric Redbeard! This is the final boss! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> the, beard, the Eric Red Bearded Beauties! because he tends to talk quite a fair bit. I don't like talking over people, but um, yeah, it's a lot to say, but he also has a lot to prove. Uh, you know, this is a man who wants to escape tag team wrestling with his associate party boy. He had two tag team matches over our last two shows. Neither went particularly well.
Burger, of course, who you recognize from Ring of Honor. Well, this is a well-traveled, experienced wrestler, and this is a very tough test for JB. You know, as I was saying, JB wants to escape tag team wrestling. He wants to make a name for himself in singles competition here at Fight Factory. This is how you do it. You get big wins in singles competition. And there's no bigger, no bigger win that you can get than somebody who's, you know, done it all in Ring of Honor. The ROH killer, okay. I think it says a lot that we've got our Ring of Honor star with us and still Party Boy gets the loudest chance out of anyone in the, in the ring. I mentioned JB earlier in the show for having a, a weak mentality. And this <laughs> okay, we're gonna see who has the better hat. Crowd gets to decide. Not a popular one. Not a popular one. Alright, here we go. Cheeseburger. Oh, that's a, that's a bit of a landslide. I can't really argue with that one. Oh, he's got another one. This one is for Foxy. Excellent. That might be the winner, actually, to be fair. Which, you know, we'll say Foxy first, Cheeseburger second. Uh, JB last. I'm gonna put JB in fifth, even though there's like two empty places there. Oh, party boy. He's gonna try on the hat. He's gonna infuriate JB even more, but unfortunately for JB, party boy rocks it. He looks amazing with that hat on. So, yeah, JB can do with that information what he wishes, but those are the facts. Start. What is the biggest match of JB's career? Of course, Cheeseburger extending the hand. Very Ring of Honor esque handshake. Not something that, uh, I mean, perhaps Cheeseburger isn't familiar with JB. Perhaps uh, he was expecting a sign of respect. The day that JB shakes someone's hand before a match is the day that you need to wake up and uh, escape whatever dream you're living in. Will JB be able to hold his own? Because for all his faults, mentally, uh, and for, for as easily as he can get distracted and offended, and as, as quickly as he can get fired up and emotionally overextend himself into a fight, JB has a lot of ability. He has, he has a lot of ability as a wrestler. He has a lot of ability technically. He's got good strength, good power. There's, there's a, a lot of, of positive assets in JB's game. They just don't appear to be highlighted as often as they perhaps should be because of uh, all the distractions. And what's very interesting about this fight as well is that JB and Cheeseburger mentally could not be more polar opposite. Uh, Cheeseburger, you know, uh, it's quite a small frame. It's usually undersized compared to his opponents. That has never put him off, ever. That has never stopped him from picking up big results. This is somebody who, who mentally has always had to be strong from the start of his career up to now to get all the wins he needs to get and establish himself uh, on the level that he has needed to establish himself at. Um, 
Uh, and he, you know, that's, that's something that's very admirable on the part of uh, a cheeseburger. But JB, and you see it here, JB's getting taunted. Uh, and, and he's not he's not able to handle. He flies off the handle too quickly. He's not somebody who takes losses very well. He takes, has absolutely no accountability, takes no responsibility for his losses. Doesn't seem to learn as much as he could from his losses. And that is something that, despite all of his talent, could potentially hold JB back. But could this be the match that JB wins? Could this be the match that allows JB to say, yes, I've beaten an international star, I've beaten a former Ring of Honor wrestler, I've beaten a cheeseburger? JB getting put off simply by the burger hat on Party Boy's head. You know, Party Boy's very, he adds a very interesting dynamic to this fight because usually when somebody has backup and somebody has someone else in their corner, it would typically be seen as an advantage. You know, the interference, uh, the support, the, the strategy. You know, you have a corner man. And, you know, this is an MMA. Corner men aren't really as, uh, as prominent in pro wrestling. But yeah, when you when you have a corner man, you've got somebody like that. Usually, it's seen as an advantage. In JB's case, just because of how bad of a team player he is and how much he hates Party Boy, I wouldn't even consider it an advantage. I actually look at Cheeseburger not having anybody in this corner, and I consider that to be an advantage. Even though, no disrespect to Party Boy, he's a valuable asset to anyone. But it just feels as though JB doesn't deal with them well, and I think Cheeseburger is better off not having those distractions uh, in his case. Well, at least JB's not short of confidence. That's always a good asset to have. really showing off his technical ability here. Locking up in a figure four, JB. Has to be careful not to keep his shoulders uh, to the canvas for a three count. Tell him Foxy to stop, uh, this, you know, I mean, that is Foxy's job at the end of the day. It would be obviously helpful if he just didn't count the things, but that would also render him effectively uh, useless as a ref. A cheeseburger, nice to meet you. on record until the end of time JB likes Party Boy make it official Party Boy absolutely ecstatic I don't think it'll be enough to mend uh, the team of JB and Party Boy but it's good for Party Boy well, maybe, maybe Cheeseburger and Party Boy would make for a good team who knows Well, that is excellent mind games from Cheeseburger as well, to be fair. I mean, you look, uh, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to wind up uh, JB, but. You know, it 
was effective getting into the head of it, but Chili B has turned it around. Cheeseburger showing off his quickness. JB just couldn't get a handle on him. Just couldn't control him. Couldn't, couldn't get a hand where it needed to be. Cheeseburger one step ahead. And that is the experience advantage coming into play as well there. JB claims. Right now he's, he's claiming that he wants to shake hands with Cheeseburger. And, you know, Cheeseburger is all about respect, you know, again, ex Ring of Honor talent, but. Touching him. <laughs> That's true, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to like that at all. There we go. This is going to be a serious handshake. Oh, and JB, all he had to do was shake Cheeseburger's hand. I know he's lost his leg, his leg's just gone. Cheeseburger has it, he can do whatever he wants. JB doesn't have the reach. Cheeseburger with that stomp. Cheeseburger getting the very very good at getting the crowd involved, getting the crowd on side, which uh, which can be a very effective tool, a surprisingly effective tool, depending on the wrestler that, that's using it and the wrestler who it's being put against. In this sort of match, the crowd definitely plays its part. Cheeseburger has JB's arm in a very uncomfortable spot. Looks like he's done a lot of damage to it with that move. <laughs> I mean, right now he wishes there was uh, timeouts or pauses and rest of the Unfortunately for him there isn't, so you know he's gonna have to keep up with Cheeseburger or you know he's he's not coming out here with the win. Oh. Cheeseburger again going for that arm. That seems to be a target of Cheeseburgers. him crushing onto that arm it's definitely bothering him a little bit but not enough to stop him from throwing oh, cheeseburger into the ropes into the corner you know? he seems to be tagging cheeseburger's neck JB now putting his full weight on that neck against the middle rope. And you can see Cheeseburger clutching it. And JB with a really solid strike. Knocking Cheeseburger off his feet. And JB, he has good strikes. He, he, again, when he, when, he, when he pulls those strikes out, they'll be quite effective, but Cheeseburger now with some strikes of his own. And JB counters back, but... Cheeseburger. So impressive, just that quickness, that agility. Oh, but a lovely drop kick from JB. It's not enough to put Cheeseburger away. And again, this is a weakness of JB. He can't accept. He can't accept. It's a two count. You know what I mean? That's it. 
move on, keep going. Every time he complains, every time he goes to Foxy and he calls him to question the validity of the count, he's just giving Cheeseburger more time to recover, more time to recuperate. Of the abdominal stretch from JB, now using Party Boy for leverage. And here's the benefit of having somebody in your corner like that. Cheeseburger has to tap. Party Boy, he seems to be a bit conflicted. Party Boy, he doesn't like helping JB get these sorts of wins in this sort of way. The damage will be done though. And Cheeseburger, I mean, he may not be far from tapping. He, he clearly doesn't want to tap, of course. No, no one ever does, but oh, JB! Foxy, that's why Foxy's the best at what he does. Foxy's spotting the assistance from Barry Boy and not wasting any time to cut that assistance off, catching JB off guard. And now momentum has, has switched. Just like that. Man managing to get the suplex at the rafter. JB comes the closest so far. Cheeseburger gets it though. back up to their feet taking all the time they need and Cheeseburger with a forearm on the running bulldog JB taking a very rough landing for JB you can see his head and neck kind of twisted back and a super kick and a knee from Cheeseburger now we're really seeing what Cheeseburger has in his arsenal Cheeseburger knocking Party Boy off the apron. That is going to devastate him. And JB from behind with a head kick. And dare I say, could JB be about to win the biggest match of his career? Oh, no, he's not. Cheeseburger kicks out at two. And I will say, I definitely thought that was it. I definitely thought that would be enough for JB to get the result that he wanted. And this is the thing, tantrums, constant tantrums. He's nearly there, he's 95% he's of the way there. Cheeseburger can't have much left. But JB, he just, he just can't handle it. He just can't do that last 5%, get the job done, be clinical. Be ruthless, do what you need to do to get the job done. JB with a slap to the head of Cheeseburger. Oh, if he wants to be the ROH killer, as he said at the start of this match, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to be relentless. He's gonna have to dig deeper. Is JB capable of digging deeper? That is the question. Another really solid punch to the face. That, that right hand from uh, from JB. We're seeing it again. It's very. It is solid and. It's, Precise as well as powerful, but Cheeseburger now fighting back with some strikes of his own, some forearms to the head of JB. Leaves JB on wobbly legs. And JB putting a stop to the momentum of Cheeseburger. Could he go? <laughs> I 
can the ROH, the self-proclaimed ROH killer. Put Cheeseburger away here with a scissor kick. No, Cheeseburger moves out of the way. And Cheeseburger rolls up JB and JB kicks out a two. But JB's gonna want to stay focused. Cheeseburger looks like Two telegraph by JB. The cheeseburger taking advantage. Goes for the pin. And JB kicks out a two, but cheeseburger, and this is the difference between cheeseburger. This is the difference between cheeseburger and JB. You know, JB comes close, doesn't get it, throws a tantrum. Cheeseburger comes close, doesn't get it, locks in a submission, and that is the difference maker. That is the difference, you know, between prospects and contenders. That is the difference between the experienced and those who are still learning to find their way. JB is a loose cannon. And if he doesn't steady himself and ground himself he is never going to get he's never going to get those big wins like he, he's never going to be the ROH killer that he wants to be This has been a long time coming. Phil and Justy, we've been doing this for so long now. See, this goes way back, way before the saviors, all the way back to 2019, where Justy decided to cost us, his tag team partners, by the way, a match because Justy could see it, Phil could see it. They knew the rise was coming and they did everything they could to hold us back. And I will admit, before the pandemic, they probably had our number. You know what's happened over the last two or three years? We've been working together, we've been training together, and we've established ourselves in 2022 as the best tag team in this country. And yet still, still we have to deal with you. The perpetual thorn in our sides. Well, thankfully, it all comes to an end. On Friday, no rules, no restrictions, just us and you, PB and J, versus the saviors of destiny. the happy music and you see the high energy that always comes with Justy and Phil Boyd, Team PB and J. But there is, you know, this is a match that is going to be probably darker than most. This is a match that's going to be quite violent. This is no disqualifications, this is no rules. This is, I mean, weapons are allowed weapons are going to be needed, let's be honest, I mean, this is the Sabres versus Team PB and J, two on two. It 
when you even look at Team PBJ, they are, they're not dressed to wrestle, they're dressed to fight, and there is a difference. I think the look on Andy Steele and Owen Richards faces tells the whole story. This all started back in 2019 when Justy was set to team with Andy Steele and Owen Richards and, and he basically turned his back on them, he attacked them and uh, he cost his own team the match because he thought that Andy Steele and Owen Richards were that unbearable, there was no point in winning alongside them. Or, was it, as the Saviors claim, because both Jussie and Phil Boyd saw something in them that they never wanted to be the case. They saw something in the Saviors that told them that the Saviors would one day be the best tag team in Irish wrestling. Well, we're about to find out tonight if that is the case. They have the gold. I mean, they have they have the wins. They have the results just to back up that claim. The only team they haven't beaten in two on two action, though, in Fight Factory, is Team PB and J. They won the titles in two v two v two multi team action, but never in a normal tag match. And I call this a normal tag match. This is going to be. Perhaps a little bit more violent than a normal tag team match, but... titles are we gonna close the year with them winning their titles back going to be interesting with this is that I mean effectively this is a very different fight for the Sabres of Destiny. We have seen the Sabres of Destiny wrestle. We've seen the Sabres of Destiny win wrestling matches. We have not seen the Sabres of Destiny have to fight in a fight such as this. We have not seen the Sabres of Destiny in a no disqualifications environment before. Will they be able to adapt or will it potentially overwhelm them? We've seen the same as the Destiny in main events before. We've seen the main event just a couple months ago, and they did come out on top, although, you know, it, it came with assistance. In this case, two on two with no assistance. Can they get it done against them? Oh my God, this double pile driver to Justy and Phillip. There's a kick out of two, I, I genuinely, as shocking as it would be, I thought we were in for a very 
A very short right there for a second. But the Sabres and Destiny, they're doing what they need to do right from the start. The team PB and J counter. And team PB and J throwing the Sabres and Destiny out of the ring. And there's no count outs here. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep attacking. And Justy through the ropes, wiping out both of the Saviors, Phil Boyd. Where's he going? He's going up. Up to the middle turn, looking off the top across. Body wiping out. Pretty much everyone. And I will admit, it is difficult to see from this vantage point. There's a lot of, a lot of bodies in the way. But certainly, it looks like Team PB and J have the upper hand at the minute. throwing Andy Seal into the ring post. I mean, this is not a, a technical affair at all. They're, I was going to say, Team PB and J, they've got excellent experience. Serious, serious technical ability, of course. Oh! Now you see over at the other side, there's, there's two fights to be keeping an eye on at once. We've got Phil Boyd and what looks like Owen Richards, I want to say. One of the Sabres, anyway. Over at this side, over the far side, we've got Justy. Uh, and Andy Steele and Phil Boyd with a stiff uppercut to Owen Richards. <laughs> well, you know, this this wouldn't be Justy and Phil's you know a style that they'd be most known for, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a style that they were more than comfortable. Uh, in having to fight in, you know, a brawl around the outside. We haven't seen the imp I was going to say we haven't seen the implementation of any weapons yet, but I from where I'm sitting, yet, yeah, I can see candlesticks. But throwing the Sabres into the ring first appears to have backfired as the Sabres of Destiny that's the same as the Destiny. They, they don't even they don't even go for the candlesticks. They're going for the usual. I mean, it, it works time and time and time again. Why, why not just stick to what you know? And you see an old riches, of course, work incredibly well together. Their chemistry uh, is second to none. As Justy kicks out with two, but again. That, that wasn't about putting Justy away for the three count. That was really just forced him to, to physically exert himself to kick out. You do enough of that. And of course, you can wear down the wrestler over the course of the match. Especially one that's going to be as hard hitting as this. As the saviors get thrown into each other by Justy and Phil. Could we see what we're used to seeing from Team PB and J? Could we be about to see the stumps? Oh no! Oh no! We're about to see some kendo sticks. The Saviors wishing they were at home watching the toy show, but they are here in the Fight Factory getting battered with kendo sticks. And that's a lot of pain to be jumping through. Andy Steele, he took too long. He took too long. If he hadn't just taken the jump straight away, but he took it, he, even just a second, was all it took for Justy and Phil to be aware of their surroundings and to catch Andy Steele. The most painful way that move could be countered with a kendo stick. Of course, normally, you're not going to see that sort of counter, but there's no disqualifications. And Richards goes to the toes line. They both went up under a 3D. This, <laughs> this is all Team PB and J so far. This is, they've been looking comfortable. Yeah, Saviors, they, they hit the double pile driver to start off the fight. Well, they started off the fight with a strong start, but uh, things are turning on their head. And right now, 
Jussie and Phil Boyd, they have just channeled their inner Dudleys with that 3D and now we're getting the tables of course underneath the ring. That is where the magic happens. Jay somehow managed to get the victory of course there'll be two time Irish tag team champions former Titanic tag team champions as well I think as Phil Boyd blows Owen Richards off the apron uh, but Owen Richards counters it and Owen Richards getting suplexed straight back into the ring We asked the question. Oh, Andy Steele from behind with the ladder. I was going to say, we asked the question, how would the Sabres of Destiny adapt to this style of fight? Well, Andy Steele doing the smart thing and attacking PB and J when their eyes are off and bringing that ladder into play. And that is cold, hard steel. The saviors of Destiny, they are going to be very, very grateful for this reprieve after the Kendo sticks to the back. They've thrown Phil into the ladder and now they grab Justy. Now Justy getting thrown into the ladder and that is a, that is a rougher landing than you probably would have even, than the saviors was probably even going for. Well, Owen Richards saying, you wanted this. Team PB and J, they've been after this match for months. They've wanted to get their hands on Sabres Destiny for months. They did want this, that is true. And that is why this match is what it is. It's, it's not just about, uh, about titles, as prestigious as they are. This is also personal. This is also, there's a lot of bad blood between these men. And Andy Steele and Phil Boyd are now going at it. Strike for strike, but Phil Boyd getting the upper hand. And Phil Boyd gets thrown over the ropes by Andy Steele, or at least Andy tries to throw Phil over the ropes, but Phil Boyd lands on his feet. Goes again, but Andy Steele this time gets Phil over the ropes, and Phil Boyd on the apron with a kick to Andy Steele. Now heading up to the top turnbuckle. And a drop kick to Andy Steele. And it's tough to see from this angle, but Andy Steele appeared to catch a bit of that ladder on the way down as well. Owen oh, Richards grabbing the leg of Phil Boyd and a super kick from Andy Steele. And you know, in a fight as vicious as this, the same as the Destiny, you know, their chemistry is really going to pay off here. Their ability to work together and their ability to grow from match to match as a tag team and develop as a tag team. And Oh, the save of Destiny. It looks like they're going for the... Looks like they're going for the cable ties here. Or is it... Is it cable, it's, again, it's, it's difficult to see from this angle, but it certainly looks like they're going to tie up the hands of Phil Boyd, which, again, is legal. Uh, and Owen Richards also getting rid of that table, which is, is going to be very important. Changes the shape of the fight as well. And that table has moved all the way back here over beside the commentary desk. And the Savers slowly but surely have managed to gain more control in this match. They looked like they had been somewhat overwhelmed by the more experienced Team PB and J. But they've taken their eyes off Justy. They brought in that bat that we've seen before. Been a lot of fights between these two teams over that bat. Owen Richards has hit Justy with that exact bat. 
just a month ago and now Justy getting his revenge as he throws Andy Steele into the corner and hits Owen Richards with a set of forearms and Justy oh Andy Steele all oh, right on the side of the head right on the temple with that bat and that, that's enough to knock out anyone that's certainly hope Justy's all right after taking that strike with the bat but as it stands right now Phil Boyd Phil Boyd is effectively defenseless his hands are tied and they've got the kendo sticks Phil Boyd of course defiant to the surprise of no one because anybody who knows Phil Boyd knows how defiant he's going to be in a situation like this knows how fearless he's going to be in a situation like this you don't last as long as Phil Boyd has lasted in Irish wrestling without toughness without both physical and mental strength and Phil Boyd has that in abundance but his hands are tied all Phil's going to care about is getting the win and Andy Steele now brandishing that bat Owen Richards sits up Phil Boyd and this is not looking good. Oh, Phil Boyd ducks underneath. And with no hands, Phil Boyd has managed to turn this around all by himself. And how has he managed that? Phil Boyd, with a shoulder to Owen Richards, a boot to Andy Steele. He doesn't care if he's handcuffed. He doesn't care if his hands are tied together. He'll... It looks like he's trying to, to, to break. Break the knot on his hands. Well, he has the saviors rocked. And a missile dropkick sends both men down. He's asking for assistance at ringside to undo his hands. Again, he can do that. You know, this is, this is, uh, this is no DQ. Anything goes. And Phil Boyd's hands. Phil Boyd's hands are back. And he is <laughs> putting them to good use. With the kendo stick on Andy Steele and Owen Richards. And Phil Boyd now chasing Owen Richards. Up the, right up the stairs to the back of the fight factory here. This is typically, typically not an area you would associate with combat. And now I can't see where they've gone. I'm, I'm completely blind. To, uh, to anything going on upstairs in the ring, of course. Justy's back fighting. And it, he's, he, he had the pin, but Foxy, Foxy's attention is diverted completely in the wrong place. Foxy's attention is diverted up backstage. Uh, we, we actually... A complete ninety degree angle to the window, but you see Owen Richards' face pressed up against the window. Let's something you see of a horror movie. He's gone back into that ring, and Andy Steele with a lovely spinning back kick to Phil Boyd. Phil grabs him and plants him, and he doesn't manage to secure the pin. Owen Richards, he's stumbling out from the backstage area. Owen Richards! Owen, he's, he's, on the, he's gone to the outside, he's on the edge of the stairs and... Off the top! Owen Richards off the top of the stairs with a flying elbow straight through the chest of Justy through the table. That's what's happening on the outside, in the ring. Phil Boyd looks to be making his way to his feet. And Phil Boyd has that ladder that the Sabres introduced earlier on. He also Irish up on the steel into the ladder. Counters it. 
feeling Andy going back and forth. Andy Steele, very, very, that was a very smart move. Uh, you know, grabbing the ladder and wrenching it back rather than trying to Irish strip Phil. If one thing isn't working, adapt, improvise. Uh, and that is what Andy Steele did. And that's, a, that's a strange ladder, I won't lie. That is a, a uniquely shaped ladder, but it looks to be ideal for wrestling. I can't lie. Andy Steele, where's he going? He's going... Up to the top turnbuckle, now he's going up to the top of the ladder. He doesn't want to be careful, we do have a, a low ceiling here in the fight factory, but Phil Boyd, he's up. Now it's Phil and Andy on the top of the ladder. Andy Steele, what can be going for here, off the top. Andy Steele. Is he going to land it? I mean, no, Phil's countering. Phil Boyd off the top of the ladder. And it looked like Andy Steele had a plan there. Phil Boyd countered it. Now Phil, really with a golden opportunity to, to end this match here. But the saviors are still in on over Phil Boyd. Turns it into a submission. And this could be it. Team PB and J. May win back their tag team championships. If Andy taps. And he's wrenching back even further. This could be it. The fans want him to tap. They're screaming for it, but Owen Richards comes in. And stops the tap from taking place. Now Justy. Just the anvil with the kendo sticks. Double submission attempt. This could be it. But the savers still haven't tapped. They're doing everything they can to stop each other from tapping. And this match continues. The crowd. The crowd are stunned. Really, that looked like we were getting. New tag team champions, really that look like Justy and Phil. We're gonna win them back, but you know, that's the Sabres are tough as well. I mean, people don't usually associate the Sabres with their toughness because they're usually focused on their antics, they're usually focused on their cheating and their interferences and whatever else. But the Sabres definitely are tough, and they're proving that here tonight. They've adapted very well to the circumstances, they've adapted very well to no disqualifications, to weapons, to violence. They have shown a whole different side to themselves. And Andy Steele. Those kicks are something that just gets better and better with every fight. Every match that Andy Steele has is an improvement. Phil Boyd! Phil Boyd catching Andy Steele. And you hear the fans voice their approval. This is awesome and Fight Factory chants ring around the Fight Factory as the Saviors regroup on one side, Justy and Phil Boyd, they regroup on the other. Oh, and a double low blow from Justy and Phil Boyd and now pile drivers, very similar to that that we saw when this match just started and oh, I thought we had new champions. I thought we had new champion to double pile driver the exact same as we saw at the start of this match, but the other way around. This is this whole fight is coming full circle because Team PB and J have thrown everything they have at the Saviors. The Saviors have thrown everything they have at Team PB and J, and neither side would like to admit this. Neither side would like to admit this, but you can almost feel. There's an unwritten, unspoken, mutual respect that has been earned by both sides here. Just from, from how much they've all, they've all been through in this fight. You can see 
see the, the ring now getting flooded with chairs. They're in Justy, they have a mission in mind, but they're going to have to be careful. Every weapon you introduce in a match like this, every single one can be used against you. They're going to have to be, need to be careful. They're going to need to stay focused. And focus is a very difficult thing to keep when you're, you know, you've are you been fighting for this long. Especially a fight as brutal as this one. To be fighting for that long, focus can be quite a difficult thing to, to keep. But If they can stay focused and hit the pile driver as Hillboy is calling for them, this could be it. Both, team, both teams are very close to the finish line. Really, at this stage, whoever gets the upper hand from this point on is pretty much theirs. And Phil is lifting up Owen Richards, but Andy Steele running across that ring apron and hitting Justy. And now Owen Richards. Owen Richards throwing. Phil back first onto those chairs. Andy Steele, where is he going? He's gonna to want to be careful. Off the top, Justy! Onto those chairs. And the save to Destiny. They've yet to hit it, but it looks like they could be going for the call to action. And they hit it on Justy! And Justin kicks out at two! I can't believe I'm saying this, but the match continues. Somehow, the match continues. I mean, that really is it for the same as the Destiny. The call to action, that's what puts away team after team after team. They hit it on Justy, and yet, Justy, despite having to go through a table, despite having to go through all the punishment that he's been through in this fight, the bat, the pile driver, everything, onto the previously injured neck, everything. He gets hit with a call to action and still he manages to kick out. And this time, Phil Boy prevents the second one from taking place. And Andy Steele goes for the kick, but this time Phil Boy ducks under. He catches Owen Richards. And now Phil Boyd with the chair. Putting Andy Steele's head straight into it. And Phil Boyd off the middle rope. Oh, an assistant pile driver onto the chair. Now, if this isn't it, then Foxy needs to do something. Ah, this is this is insane. This is insane. I mean, I you know how much those Irish tag team titles mean to both teams, I, and you know not just what the titles mean, but what what the win means to both teams. You know, the pride. You know of. of Getting a victory over over the Saviors or over Team PB and J for the first time ever, but you know this is this is, Foxy's gonna need to be careful. He might need to protect his wrestlers from themselves, but this is no disqualification. That's what it means. You know this is the lengths and depths that these teams are willing to go through, and they oh my God, of course. Of course, we've got the tax. Uh, it's one of those things that the visuals really do all the explaining for you. I don't even need to say anything. And Team PB and J have the saviors up. But Andy Steele, he has the bat. Andy Steele with the bat in hand. Very smart of Andy Steele. His awareness all throughout this fight has been very impressive. To have that bat in hand, ready to use on Justy when it was required. And now fought action onto the tax. And that's it. Finally. Finally, that's it. And can even say after a performance like that you know it was a fun fight it was great to watch and it's sort of like you, you on one hand you don't want it to end because it is an excellent fight and it is incredible to watch but on the other you're kind of glad it's come to an end for the simple fact that if it went any longer I don't even want to imagine the sort of damage that would have been done to Justy or Phil or even the Saviors despite their victory you know they're not going to be comfortable walking out of here 
insane. Insane. Um, but then, you know, what else were you expecting at the end of the day? I'm the ceiling Owen Richards. As much as you may hate them, at the end of the day, they have those titles for a reason. They have the talent, they have the ability. But what they've showcased tonight is that they have the toughness. And they are willing to fight through wars. To hold on to those belts. For absolutely everything they have. They've finally beaten Team PB and J. Two on two, no excuses, no bullshit. They have beaten pretty much everyone Fight Factory has to offer. And when you beat every tag team Fight Factory has to offer, what's next? That is the question. It's a very intriguing question. I don't know. I mean, if you're a team in Europe, if you're a team at the top of your game, and you want to prove yourself, this is the team to prove yourself against. Fight Factory's number one. Ireland's number one. And possibly even Europe's number one. The real deal, Andy Steele. Owen Richards. These are the Sabres of Destiny, and these are the Irish tag team champions.